try and make sense of all the recent turmoil in the markets, I'm joined by Andre Knight, founder of fxknight.com. Hi Andre, what's the topic of your technical analysis today? This week I'd like to talk to you about what one of our traders, David Goldstein, has termed the chocolate tsunami. You'll recall a few weeks ago we had a terrible tsunami in Japan, so powerful that the effects of it were felt as far down as Antarctica. Well, what we had this prior week was an announcement from the Swiss National Bank that they were pegging um, the value of the franc to 1.2 euros. That sent a tsunami all the way around the world that was felt even as far as the Japan. And we'll see the effects of it by comparing the euro franc and also the dollar yen. Here we're looking at a daily chart of the euro Swiss and you can see the sharp reaction when the announcement came from the Swiss National Bank. But they did say they were pegging to 1.20 and you'll see we actually overshot that level. Using Fibonacci you'll be able to see that we were actually able to predict exactly how far we would overshoot by. Drawing from the low to the high and measuring the retracement at 38.2% we would anticipate an extension to 138.2%, which is 1.2112. Now, let's look at how the effect was felt over in Japan. You can see that the yen has found support versus the US dollar at 76.60, which actually happens to be a long-term Fibonacci level. For a while, we've been struggling between this level and the daily 21 moving average. We managed to break above it once, only to fall back down below, failing to find support until we fell back to the FIB. What was different about this time around, the same day that the Swiss National Bank made their announcement, people fearing that the Bank of Japan would also intervene with their own currency, suddenly started getting out of their yen positions, which caused the yen to weaken against the dollar. Remember, the yen is in the second position, so we have an inverse relationship between strength and the chart. What is different this time around though is that we have found support at the daily 21 moving average for several days in a row. What I'll be watching very closely going forward is whether we can continue to close above 77.18. If we do and if we get a favorable candlestick formation suggesting a reversal, I'm going to go long the dollar yen with my first target being the weekly 21 moving average which incidentally is what held as resistance when the real tsunami occurred. That would put our first target at 78.88. If we manage to break above this level and find support at that level, then I will target a return to the next long-term Fibonacci level, which is 80.94. And what about gold, Andre? We spoke about it last time, but with the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen under pressure from their central banks to soften, can we expect another rally? We're still in it for now, but we're watching it certainly much more closely. I think uh, the world's running out of currencies to run to and there's renewed uncertainty as to whether Greece will be able to meet its debt obligations or not. So for now we're watching the daily 21 exponential moving average very closely. Let me show you. Basically we're okay as long as we continue to have daily candles closing above 1815.88. If we have a close below that, we're going to exit our trade, you know, still for a profit, just maybe not as much profit as we were expecting. And then we will wait for bullishness to return before we get back in. Our long-term target remains 2027.27. Thank you, Andre. I'm afraid you'll have to wait for the next episode for more expert technical analysis by the FX Knight. Goodbye for now.